Hello everyone, my name is Raphael Walter and in this demonstration I'll be showing you how you could use SAP iCore, SAP iLaunchpad to build uh, an application uh, for traditional AI in uh, SAP build apps with uh, low code. So first, uh, I won't be going to the actual uh, SAP iCore, SAP iLaunchpad uh, procedure because there are many tutorials available like developers.sap.com tutorials AI core hello world they guide you through everything that you need to do it's really pretty good and then you build a house predictor with AI core they explain everything to you there are quite a lot of steps you ingest the data you build the metrics you save your model and then you do an inference server and then you deploy it that's the end of the of the tutorial and then uh, the thing is, I think there are still a few hurdles that you might meet and it would prevent you from being able to perform this. Uh, so I just wanted to point them out. And as I said, I'll be building an SAP build apps low code application that's going to consume this because it's really nice to be able to build an AI model, but you need to be able to use it. So I'll be doing the application uh, that consumes my API. Uh, just to explain the story behind this, I had a customer who works in, uh, in uh, buildings and they have lots of issues with um, uh, fake or not fake, but uh, fraud uh, in, uh, in with their suppliers. So this is a fake data set that I've created with the different transactions, the amount, the quantity, which could be uh, number of hours, it could be uh, material or and stuff like this. Uh, and you see here the, the type of, uh, of the invoice, the time it took them to pay and if it was rejected or etc. So many, many informations. And this is of course to be able to uh, detect issues they could have uh, in, in the future. So. Once again, uh, you write your Python code. This is the Python code that I'm going to be using, uh, using uh, the random forest uh, classifier to detect uh, the, 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 the fraud uh, capability, uh, possibility. And then uh, I'll show you also the, the, the server. But so just to explain a little bit, you will go into AI core, well, AI launchpad, and you will have to create. So this is what you do in the, in the um, actual SAP AI launchpad uh, site. So here you will have then your uh, configuration, your execution, you have the logs, and the classification report with the accuracy, etc. And if you used metrics, you will have the results of the metrics. And uh, if we look at the code, we are actually saving the model uh, inside of uh, uh, AWS. So I'm using Pickle and I drop my model, etc. Then you will use the inference and you will run it. Uh, you will create uh, an inference server uh, using the model that you've created uh, and you will create this deployment and this deployment will be available here and you can you can test it uh, with uh, you know, using postman for example and you see this is running and you have the logs when everything is uh, is running okay one thing before I show you this in Postman that you have to be very careful about is that when you're going to be doing, uh, of course, you have your YAML, YAML files in, in, uh, in uh, GitHub that you need to define. This is going to be used and this is well explained in the, in the tutorial. One for building the model, one for the, 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 the server. But you have to be careful with a few things. So when you're going to be doing your requirements, you, for example, this is the requirement uh, for the model itself. I'm not using a lot. I'm just using scikit-learn and pandas. But 
you have to make sure that you're using correct versions and uh, you might have a few issues there and between the model uh, versions of scikit-learn for example and the server inference model make sure that you are using the same ones you might get uh, errors like I had numpy errors because I in the beginning I would just put scikit-learn and didn't precise the the, the the, the, the version I want to be using and I would get NumPy core errors and I could not deploy it. I didn't know why and also you might have issues in this case for the server I couldn't get Flask to work so it takes a lot of tweaking and so don't give up just make sure you are using the right Flask or uh, Psychic Learn and, and make sure throughout the server and the inference server you are using the same versions otherwise you might get an issue so that's the first point and uh, and then when you're done you will have a running server as I said here I'm gonna copy paste this and then I'm gonna run it in Postman but first you need to get a token uh, for for that you will need a, a, a not that, uh, authorization uh, access token and this is explained very well here in uh, in this uh, documentation I'll, I'll put the link in the description and you get this JSON collection for AI core API and if we go into Postman you see that you will get this uh, get authorization token you will use your username and password and I'll get to that in a minute and then you will run it and you will get your authorization where did I get this authorization URL and uh, username and password so if we go into uh, our BTP uh, cockpit you will see here so sorry it's loading okay so uh, you see here my AI core instance and here if you click on AI core key you will get the client ID the client secret and the URL for your authentication this is all we need so you copy all this uh, you close and we're gonna go into postman <coughs> and uh, as I said when you get the JSON coming from the help that I've shown you the help link you will get your authorization token you have the OAuth uh, or your URL then slash all slash token grant type a client credential the username the password you run this and you get your access token if we go back into now the uh, post request uh, you have your bearer token with the token your headers uh, you follow all the so you have to set uh, a few things and I will get to that point in a minute and then your body and if you send this then it's gonna work so now that we have tested this in in postman uh, I'm gonna do it in uh, in my BTP cockpit I need to define a destination that's also a part that could be a little bit tricky uh, you get the name so actually I call this uh, the AI core this is the AI core uh, uh, deployment and you have to be careful here in the URL use the slash v2 and then all your AI core models will be deployed and will be using this specific destination which is pretty useful uh, then you use a proxy type to internet the authentication to OAuth to client credential use your client ID and the client secret that you got from the instance the token service that we just talked about using and then slash OAuth slash token and then as you see here you have a few additional properties I'm going to show you uh, those properties here so app guy were enabled set to true uh, previously sub build apps was called SAP oh was app Giver and then SAP app Giver and then became SAP build apps the HTML5 destination dynamic destination set to true URL headers AI resource group set to default as you saw in my postman I have put this the URL header content type to application JSON and and that's it so once you've done that you actually can start building your uh, SAP uh, build application and 
SAP build apps application. Yeah. So if we go here, uh, it's very, very basic. I'm uh, fraud, potential fraud detection. And here you have uh, the, f the, 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 the amount, the type, the status, the time it took to pay the, or the time it's taking to pay, etc. Supplier, the type of supplier, and the person who is validating, and then we want to send this. What's really, of course, I have my different variables. And what's important here is your uh, data entity coming from the SAP system, okay? So basically, uh, if you go, uh, this is where it's going to be super useful to use our, our, um, our destination. So if I come here, I create a data entity. I use an SAP BTP destination REST API integration. And here I will see my destination names and uh, I can see uh, my fraud, which is actually my SAP AI core. And then I can, I can start working with this. And this is the only thing you have to set up. And then uh, I won't get you through the, the actual creation of the application. There are many people who have done this, but basically then I can test this. So here I'm setting all these v features. I'm going to say that it's waiting F12 running and we see here the response and uh, the response, which is actually a fraud. So that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, of course, I could go into the details of the user interface and what happens when you click on the button. But uh, basically, of course, if the, uh, if the invoice was paid, there is no fraud. But otherwise, I'll do the post uh, method. Uh, I'll, I'll use this variable. So uh, your data entity, etc., which is actually the fraud. I, I, I use this as the record, etc. So, and I'm building the JSON that has been sent with the different uh, variables and I get the response and I show the response in the application, which is invoice suspected, uh, might be a fraud uh, invoice. Okay, so just to remember uh, the, the part for the destination, which can be a little bit difficult, uh, always use the right Python, um, the right Python uh, versions, uh, uh, but not Python, the right psychic, uh, all the, the Python libraries that you're using. Sorry, I'm tired. All the right uh, Python libraries that you're using uh, to have the good versions between your, your model and your server. Uh, when you create your destination uh, to make sure that you're using in the URL, the V2, uh, and this, this, once this is done, you'll be able to use it for all your projects, which is now that this is done, it's set up, it's, it's good for me. Uh, the token URL, uh, service URL, and all those little additional properties that I've shown you. This is all available here. Uh, the URL, the client secret, the client ID. Don't forget to get the uh, JSON collection to get the authorization token. And you're all set. So. Don't hesitate to post a comment in the under the video. It takes some time for me to answer sometimes, but uh, once again, I'll try to answer you as soon as possible. And uh, well, happy using AI, uh, either traditional AI, just like I'm showing you in this demonstration for SAP AI Core AI Launchpad, but you could also be using it for uh, generative AI because as you know, there is a generative AI and you have more than uh, 25 models that are available inside of uh, SAP AI Core. So it's actually uh, quite good. And that's probably something that I'll be doing very quickly in the future. Thank you very much. Have a great day.